Hello and welcome to this week's used car heaven. Well, coming up on the programme this week, we've got a bit of an interesting challenge because one of our viewers contacted us to say he's looking for a pickup truck. So we thought, hmm, could be fun. We've lined up three for him to drive. We'll meet him very soon. Also on this week's programme, Simon Hughes, the blood-free car doctor, is back in the surgery and Brad will have more insider tips at the trading post. But before that, let's meet this week's viewer. And it is Seb Drake, who's a builder and lives in Gatwick. At the moment, his van is not suitable for what he needs. He's after a pickup truck, plenty of load space and a cab big enough to carry his family about him. His budget is up to around £16,000, so what vehicles have we picked for him? Hi Seb, nice to meet you. Hi. So what is it you want a pickup truck for then? I need it for work, I need it for pulling power. Yeah. Um, carry a lot of stuff about from time to time? I do, I've got a, a van, but I really need a pickup truck. Just literally to pull, to drop things off, big van, difficult to park, yeah, whereas amazing. something like this would be ideal. And it's a bit different as well, isn't it? It is a bit different. I've never actually thought of having one before, but I'm definitely, definitely thinking so about it. So what about it. an American one like this? Not what I'd normally go for, but looking at it, it's, it is nice. It's a mean machine, isn't it? It is not. And I'd imagine big American, big engine. Huge engine and a huge V8. V8. Downside on that is fuel consumption. Mm, yeah, I don't have... yeah, but we'll have to see. We'll, <laughs> well the other see. two we've got are diesel, so let's go and have a look at one of those first. And the second is the Mitsubishi L200. Which I like. You like these, do you? I do. These have been a big success since they launched them about three or four years ago. Yeah, you see a lot of them around. Yeah. And first off, I think this would have to be the one I would go for. High on the list is this one. High on the list, this is what I came for. Yeah, well I think the ones we've picked out for you, they've all got double cabs. Now, is that in important in terms of the interior space, carrying kids it's the a family bonus. About? Yeah. It's definitely a bonus. Um, at least you can use it at the weekends, take it's the kids. It's an all-round vehicle. It's an all-round it? vehicle, plus it's got some grunt, it's got some loading space for yeah. me at work. It's an all-rounder. And the other option you can have on these is the sort of chrome bars around the back with the lights on the top. Fancy that? Yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> you want uh, the works? I want the works. They would have to go on, like you say, spotlights, maybe some on the front. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, Every, have everything. a look at the third one we've picked out for you, Seb. And it's this, it's the Toyota Hilux, or Truckman as it's otherwise known. What do you think of it? I like it. Do you? I like it very much. They've um, transformed it, reshaped it, it looks brilliant. I mean, they've got a long and, you know, very prestigious history with building pickup trucks Toyota. I mean, they're very reliable, that's for sure. That plays a big part in it. I mean, being a builder, you need reliability. You don't want this Can't thing to let go people, wrong, do you? Yeah, Absolutely. No. And also, this has got the added benefit of the, the hard top on the back, too. That is a good benefit. Um, I like that. Huge amount it's of luggage space, and luggage. it's all, you know, it's lockable as well, so it's very secure. Yeah, and you can take it off. That's brilliant. It's, uh... Most important thing, really, is how it drives, so um, jump in. <laughs> Seb, this is the Toyota Hilux. Yep. What do you think of it inside? Do you like the interior? Um, it's. I thought it would be more like a car, but it it is what it is. It's a it's it's a pickup. It's, yeah, it is. At the end of the day, I can't think of it as a car. I need it for work, so no, it's it's fine. I mean, at least these days, you know, they do make pickups better in terms of the interior and what you actually get for your money. I mean. Gone are the days when you get a pickup truck and there was nothing in it at all and you could almost hose the interior down. Oh, you? yeah. I mean, it's, it's got electric wind. It's got all the mod cars yeah, on it. it's got the window, it's got the CD, it's got the air conditioning. Yeah, I um, don't know about sticking a hose pop in it though. But... <laughs> Not these days, no. <laughs> it's quite no. a bouncy um, bouncy ride. I mean, that's obviously probably so, due to the so comfortable though, yeah. so it's... It's a four-wheel drive, of course, this as well, so you can, you can change the ratios on the gearbox. It's 2.5 turbo diesel engine. Yeah, I mean, when I pulled away, it seemed plenty of paper. Quite a reasonable so, performance, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, not too bad at all. So, yeah. The only thing we were saying before about the fact that this has got a hard top on the back, but the downside to that is the rear visibility is terrible, isn't it? You can't see a thing. You can't see take, anything Take yet. that away. Don't you? <laughs> it's useless, isn't yeah. it? Mirrors Sounds great in theory, yeah. but um, maybe not, not in practice. Well, not all the time, maybe. All the time you've got that back on, no. You, know, you might as well not no, have it. Well, here's Richard Hammond now with a lowdown on the Toyota Hilux. 
The least ostentatious, shall we say, of our three offerings today, the Toyota Hilux. It's been around for centuries, so there's loads of them knocking about to choose from. It is very traditionally constructed. It's a proper old farmer's friend, so it's a real chassis with the body bolted on top. That means it will be very, very solid, though it's not very sophisticated. It's leaf sprung at the back, but then most trucks are because it's very, very sturdy. It'll carry a lot of loads. It's certainly not designed to set the world on fire visually. It's not really one for posing up and down the high street, both outside and in. The interior is a rather bland Japanese interior, but it has a well-proven four-wheel drivetrain. It's been used for years, it won't go wrong. 2.4-litre turbo diesel power, which is more than enough to get you into and out of trouble. And if what you want is a reliable truck, there is a reliable truck. The Toyota Hilux is available with either a 2.4 litre engine or a 2.5 turbo diesel. Again, you can get it as a single, a crew or even a double cab. Use examples of the previous one. We found include a Hilux double cab. It's on a 51 plate, so it's very fresh with just 10,000 miles up, 16,500 quid. So there we are, that is the uh, Toyota Hilux. What do you think of that? Do you like it? It's, it's a nice ride, tough, Yeah. but nice. What about the low dairy? Is that big enough for you? I mean, this has obviously got the optional hard top on it. Ooh, it's plastic. Yeah. It's... Is that big enough? Not with this one. No. This would have to cut. This is purely bang a few tools in the back, yeah. maybe the shop. You carry a lot of high loads then? Um, it would be, yeah. It would be? It would be. So you wouldn't want that thing on the back, which rattles no, anyway. It, yeah, you noticed that, yeah. <laughs> But yeah. to drive, it's not a bad car, is it? It's not a bad car. Like I say, it's a bit tough on the back. Um, but then again, it's a pickup. It's got, it has to have tough suspension. Yeah, so you have to lump it, really. Yeah. Well, you get the chance to drive the other two very soon. But before that, let's see what the car doctor, Simon Hughes, has got in the surgery this week. Welcome to the world of Volkswagen Transporters. Now these things have been around for a right old age, uh, certainly before the start of time, and they'll probably be around long after you and I have gone. But even though they have been around for donkey's years, it's only just now that we started to get this particular problem on the five-speed gearboxes, which is fitted across the range. So if you've got a petrol, a diesel, an air-cooled, a water-cooled, this problem is going to affect you at some point. Now on the five-speed gearboxes, we've got this problem whereby the gear lever is sort of here, and the gearbox, is all the way back here. So we've got this enormous linkage that connects them and that takes its toll on the mechanics of the gearbox. Now what the problem is, is that the selector fork inside the gearbox, which kind of fits over all the gears and moves backwards and forwards, is wearing now. And previously they haven't worn, it's not a normal problem. So when you strip the gearbox down, and I know a couple of people that have stripped them down three or four times and not been able to fix it, uh, you must replace the selector fork or check it for wear. Otherwise, you, you know, you'll be driving yourself crackers by getting it rebuilt, driving it, it'll still jump out of gear or still grind and it won't solve your problem. So that's my tip basically on these vehicles at the moment because there's loads of them around in campers, um, caravan nets, um, mini buses, they're just all over the place. And there's no reason why they shouldn't be driving for years to come once the gearbox is repaired. So remember, selector fork. Thanks very much, Simon. There'll be more from the car doctor next week here on News Car Heaven. But on this week's programme, we're looking to find a new pickup truck for Seb. He's already driven this Toyota Hilux, which you thought was OK. I like to begin with, but Went off it now. And the load space wasn't fantastic. No. Now, this is the one you really wanted to drive, Mitsubishi. This is what I came for. Jump in the L200, the animal, no less. Now the interior of this Mitsubishi L200 is altogether a different proposition than the Toyota, isn't it? It is. I actually prefer it. Do you? I you do. Like this? It, it, you like the sort of well, colour tone, fake, it a bit. brushed <laughs> aluminium. It's yeah. not real, that is it, by any stretch of the imagination. No, but they've made an effort. They have, haven't they? It looks yeah. a bit smarter, doesn't it? Smarter, more, more car-like. Yeah, even more car. Absolutely. Um, Do you think there's a lot more low-down torque there in this, yeah. this engine? Yeah, Again, it's, it's the same sort of engine, two and a half litre turbo diesel, same sort of performance, same sort of poke. You wouldn't um, think it, though. No, we've no, obviously it. configured it slightly differently. Yeah. Um, and this might be better for, for towing. Definitely, that's what I was yeah. thinking. It's, it, the Hilux, 
didn't have enough grunt. It pulled away nicely. It's too much like a car. Yeah. You know. I think what I noticed on this road particularly that we were on before again in the Toyota, the same piece of road, in the Toyota, the suspension was a lot bouncy, which you tend to get on some 4x4s, but not, you know, good 4x4s these days don't do it. I don't think it's quite as roomy as the Toyota. It doesn't have quite as much space in the back there for the passengers to move. Um, no, not enough, not as much it's leg room, is there? Leg room, I don't think. But for kids, it's fine. Yeah, it's, it's fine. for the kids, they, yeah. they'll be all right in the back of there. Yeah, as long as I'm driving, I'll be all right. <laughs> well, here's Richard Hammond with everything you need to know about the Mitsubishi L200. Well, the second of our offerings is the same basic recipe as the Toyota. It's a body bolted onto a strong, sturdy chassis. It's got old-fashioned leaf springs at the back so it can carry huge weights. But then it's had a few extra bits bolted on. Well, quite a lot of extra bits, actually. For a start, there's about an acre of chrome plating the thing, which I've got to admit, looks pretty good. You also might notice there's an extra set of doors here and an extra set of seats. It is a four-seater because it's in a crew cab configuration. But it doesn't stop there. There's loads of other little luxuries you wouldn't expect to find in your average truck. All four windows are electric. As are the wing mirrors, you get air conditioning and even a reasonable stereo. I'm not saying it's a car for sissies, though. It's a proper truck. I mean, it's a Mitsubishi. It'll take the punishment on and off-road. It'll carry huge loads and it has a decent four-wheel drive system, too. What I am saying is, if you decide to go for the Mitsubishi, it's maybe not one to turn up at a farmer's market in. Know what I mean? That dependable two and a half litre turbo diesel produces 113 brake horsepower. You can get it as a single or a double cab. The L200 was introduced in 98 and is still built today. Used examples we dug up include an L200 with a double cab on a 98, that's an S Reg, with 55,000 miles up, 9,995 quid. Now, I suspect, Seb, that from the look on your face, whilst we were driving that, you enjoyed it. Much better. Yeah? Much better, much softer. Nice ride to it, hasn't it, for what is a... I mean, it's a pickup truck, and it's a truck at the end of the day, isn't it? It is, but it's it's so much more. Yeah. It's Hilux beats it. Well, this beats the Hilux, I should say, hands so down. So far, yeah. yeah. Still got the American one to drive, but, I mean, this has yeah. got a better load area, hasn't it? Well, for a start, it's not plastic. Checker plate, tough, yeah, durable. Yeah, that's better for you, is it? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, um, and it looks like you say a bigger load area, and I think it can take about one and three quarter tons. Is that right? Yeah, good value for money this car, I think. Yeah. yeah. Well, you get a chance to drive that big American beast very soon <laughs> in part two. Uh, that's all on the way very soon here on Used Car Heaven. Hello and welcome back to part two of Used Car Heaven. On this week's programme, we're looking to find a new pickup truck for Seb here. He's already driven a Toyota and the Mitsubishi and soon he'll get to drive this big American beast from Chevrolet. But before that, Richard Hammond has something a little bit different for him to consider. Now, I know we've looked at pickups so far, but I want you to bear with me for our alternative because the Land Rover Discovery, just because it hasn't got an open back, doesn't mean you can't get loads of stuff in, and you do get a lot more flexibility and a lot more comfortable accommodation too. I mean, think about it, it's got a great image and as much pedigree and history as you could possibly want. And how often are you going to carry anything that really won't fit in there? And if it didn't fit in there, you could always fold the seats flat and you'll have room for loads of stuff. Not only that, with the seats up and these rear ones folded down, you can seat seven quite comfortably. It will be a very flexible car for your needs. When you need to tackle the rough stuff, well, the Discovery is reckoned to be one of the world's very best off-roaders. Again, it benefits from a separate chassis and body, which means it can really cope with pretty much whatever you throw at it. Not only all of that, you're going to get more for your money. This is an R-plated example. It's a V8, so it's going to have loads of power. It's got everything on it, and it's only done about 40,000 miles, so it's barely run in. And it's, what, 11 and a half grand. All that, plus it's going to be an awful lot more comfortable on the motorway, too. Worth thinking about, I reckon. Thanks very much, Richard. So a Land Rover Discovery, that's an alternative idea. It's a 4x4, but is it big enough? Is it practical enough for you? For my dad, maybe, but not for me. Not for you. No. What about this big beast, the Chevy? This would yeah. do me. This would do me. Bit of a pimp mobile, this really, isn't it? Start her up. Let's go for a spin. Now, when you said to us, Seb, that you were interested in getting a pickup truck, we thought, well, Pickup trucks, I mean, we're talking American really, aren't we? I mean, that is the land of the pickup truck. So we thought of the three, we had to produce 
a big baby. Have you done that? <laughs> we have, haven't You've we just? That. This is big, it's a Chevy one. And I mean, in America, they call these trucks because it's just so big. I can't get over it, I mean. It's huge, isn't it? I mean, at the front you've got, adult. yeah, you've got seating for three people and you've even got this little sort of fold down thing where you can put your huge gallons of coffee and on the way to work in the morning, if you want to do that. But, um, it's, I mean, like, it's, it's like a couch in the back. It is, isn't it? It's like driving, driving It's very, stuff. very comfortable. It's weird to drive. Left hand drive, of course. Left hand drive. Takes a bit of getting used to it, doesn't not it? used to that, yeah. <laughs> I suspect that this would probably cost 80 to 100 pounds to fill it with petrol. <laughs> That's going to hurt anyone. Yeah. <laughs> and you wouldn't even get very far on that either. No, you'd have to plan your route around petrol stations, <laughs> wouldn't you? Yes. Just carry on behind you in the back, carry a petrol pump. It's, it's, it's got the biggest loading space. It has. Yeah. I mean, that's the great thing going for it, isn't it? It's, it is absolutely huge. And if you, you know, if you want something that can carry the ultimate sort of capacity, then this is it, then this yeah. is the one to go for, isn't it? Right. You couldn't ask for anything bigger. You couldn't, could you? I mean, going down these country roads is a bit, a bit hairy. Right? Yeah, because it's, it's wide, it's, isn't it's, it? It's wide. It's and wide. The left-hand thing. No, it's. Yeah. Miles you can't see you can't see the front of it at all, can you? You've got no, no idea where the front no. of the car is. Until you hit the car in front. Yep. <laughs> Which we won't do, of course. Okay. Anyway, here's Richard Hammond with all we need to know. Yes, all the details about this huge Chevy pickup truck. No, I don't want to get out. Have I really got to? Well only if, if there's nobody looking, right, we'll do this, but quickly if there's no one around. Um, Seb, I don't know how you're feeling self-confidence wise. If it's running high, then this might be for you. If it's at a very low ebb, then this might be just the boost you need. But if you're just feeling normal blokish, I'm not sure that our third option is going to be for you. Brash, it most certainly is. It is in fact a Chevrolet Aztec special edition step-sided wagon thing. It's absolutely huge and designed more, I suspect, for just steering in a straight line for thousands of miles across America. To help it do that, it does benefit from a 5 litre V8, which means it's not going to be short of grunt, neither will it be short of thirst. Expect your fuel bills to be enormous, bigger than the truck. Inside it's everything you'd expect from a big American truck, kind of fat and comfy. It'll accommodate six Europeans, three in the front or three in the back, or probably four big ass Americans, two in the front and two in the back. Either way, I hope you're feeling very brave, but one thing you cannot deny, this is an awful lot of metal for your money. If you really want the Chevy Pickup Aztec Special Edition, bear in mind that 5 litre V8 petrol engine is going to cost you when it comes to insurance, but you do have a choice of six seats inside. You can only get one through specialist importers, and the one we found is Chevy Blazer 99 V-Reg 58,000 miles. It is right hand drive, remember, 8,995 quid. Well, there we are, America is the land of the pickup trucks, and this is a big beast, it's the Chevy. And it's got a huge load area, hasn't it? I mean, enormous. It's big all around. It's big, isn't it? But what about the practicalities of this? Not very practical, is it? It's, it's too thirsty to start with. Too thirsty. 10 miles to the gallon doesn't sound very good to me. Definitely not. <laughs> Definitely not. No, it's too thick. It's just too big. Yeah. Too big. It's a great cruising machine, though. It's great for America, yeah. which is highways galore, but not here. Not for here. Not for Listen, here. Listen, I don't tell you your verdict just yet. I think I know where you're going, but we'll have to wait just a little bit longer because before that, here's Brad with more insider tips at the trading post. Today I'm going to be talking about buying a used 4x4 pickup truck. American style vehicle, very popular over here in the UK now. When you're buying one of these vehicles, look at the rear tailgate of the car. Check for any obvious signs of damage. Bear in mind that the water runs down the back of the load area here, so there may be some rust round the hinges and in the corners of the vehicles. Always check that. In the load area itself, there's three different types of surfaces usually. Plastic, bare metal or aluminium. I'd always recommend the plastic, it's more hard wearing, can scuff very easily, and doesn't damage the load area or any of the framework of the vehicle. Tyres on these vehicles are massive, rather like tractor tyres. So always check the condition of those because you could be into a lot of money if they need replacing. I'd always buy a double cab rather than a single cab. More popular, better resale value. Inside the vehicle, check the condition of the interior. It's been used by a builder. There could be some damage on the carpets, tears, things like that. Check the service history, check the mileage. Bear in mind that most of these are diesel as well. 
So they are designed to do a lot of mileage, they'll be put off if one's got high mileage, as long as the service history is good. Check the uh, condition of the gears as well, bear in mind they have a switchable gearbox, so check all the gear settings. Those are my tips for buying a used pickup truck, I'll be here again next week. Thanks very much Brad, there'll be more insider tips on the trading post next week here on Used Car Heaven, but now it's that all important time, it's decision time, it's the verdict for you Seb. Now we like to do this in reverse order, so which one are you putting in third place? It's going to have to be the Hilux. Yeah, the Toyota. Yeah. You liked it originally, didn't you? Quite I, keen on it. I did, from the outside. Once, dry, once driven, mm. no. Yeah, a bit too bouncy on the suspension. Too bouncy. Dis disappointing, that's yeah. what it was. Load space, no. No, and the plastic as well in the back. Plastic, hard ride, disappointing. Oh, that's very good. all I can say. So in second place, what are you going to put? This big beast, the American this, one, yeah? Yeah, I would love it, but... It's not practical. It's not, it just isn't, isn't no, it? No, it's... It's a cruising car along the boulevards of somewhere sunny, I suspect. Exactly. Which I'd love to take it then. Yeah. But not for England. Not for you, no. Not for me. Too juicy. Great load space. Not enough room in the back. But well, bags of cup holders. <laughs> <laughs> That's the important thing. Yeah, I could go through McDonald's a few times. Yeah, 18 grand as well. It's fairly, fairly pricey, isn't it, for a five-year-old car? Too pricey. So in first place, it has to be this and the Mitsubishi L200. This is the one, is it? This is the one I have chosen. Um, it's got looks, it drives, it pulls. Yeah. Um, it's comfy, it's got load space, it takes a ton and three quarters. It, it's everything. Everything really you is. need. And your wife would enjoy this and you could take the kids <laughs> about it as well. Yeah, yeah, but... Um, I'm come first, yeah. Yeah. Listen, Seb, thanks very much for your time today. I think you've Cheers. made a good choice because I think that this animal is a good beast to choose. That's it from this week's used car. Heaven will be back at the same time next week.